I want to talk to you guys a little bit today about um, maybe giving. I want to give you some ideas about how to consider that approach a little bit differently. Um, and uh, my hope is that by the end of this conversation, you, you think about that product or company development um, uh, with a slightly different perspective. And, and, and if you if you apply these lessons like like I have, I think it'll dramatically increase the rate of your product development or the rate at which you as an entrepreneur find uh, product market fit. A little bit of background on on us. Um, I'm the co-founder and CEO of Ada. Uh, we're an enterprise AI customer service platform. Effectively, we make those annoying wait times and hold music disappear for big companies. And we've had a lot of success doing this in a short amount of time. And in the last sort of two and a half years, our company's grown from a team of two to a team of 100 plus. We're growing very quickly out of Toronto, Canada. Um, and uh, uh, I think a lot of the lessons that I've learned over the course of the last two and a half years, I hope apply to all you who put your, your hands up uh, and those who didn't, perhaps uh, it, they will in, in the future. So I wanna, this will be a little bit philosophical, but I want to share with you a little bit about um, what I learned about uh, my approach to AI product development. The, the, first, uh, the first lesson that I think is just so unbelievably uh, important is to uh, recognize that technology is a tool. It's, it's not inherently valuable. Um, it, it, the number of times, um, certainly within product organizations, and I speak to other entrepreneurs who, who just um, are looking to apply AI to a, pro a problem and assume that uh, the, the application of AI automatically makes something useful, um, I think that's just very dangerous. And I think it's important for, uh, for you to approach um, product development uh, from, from this sort of mentality. Assume that it's not actually that useful. And the way to do this actually, in, in my view, is to go into the wild, to actually remove yourself from technology. That's how you uh, understand its utility uh, and application to the world. You know, for us at Ada, I spent a lot of time in customer service call centers. I spent a lot of time before we, even though we had an inkling that AI could, could have an impact on the customer service operations, seems intellectually that that would make sense. We actually fought that temptation to apply the technology early. And we went into the wild and we performed customer service manually for actually seven different companies at the same time as remote customer service agents. And we answered the phone, and we answered live chat sessions, and we answered email tickets. And, and we did this and we learned so much about the, the, the value of customer service technology. The same thing is true, um, I think, when you experience this pain, you think about um, YouTube series, by the way. Anyone, anyone, heard, of the YouTube seri anyone heard of the YouTube series um, uh, Primitive Technology? Okay, a few people. This is like a must-subscribe YouTube series for everyone in the room. This is my favorite YouTube series. Essentially, for those of you who don't know, Primitive Technology is um, a, an Australian guy who goes out into the bush without any technology at all. Doesn't he, he's just wearing a pair of shorts, and he figures out how to live. And it's so fascinating because when, through his eyes, you learn the value of an ax. You learn the value of fire. And, and um, he ends up building the, the, his approach to this, these, these problems ends up being so much different than you would assume if you were to just solve this problem intellectually. And the same is true for your product development. The same is true is, is for your company building. It's by experiencing the pain of not having an ax that you understand what a great ax really is. So that's what it, that, that, I'd encourage everyone to, to, to consider that. Once you're experiencing that pain, I think it's really important for you to actually scavenge. This is a really, a really useful word, I think. Instead of just simply understanding the pain and slapping on the solution that you've dreamt up, look around you and figure out how to solve the problem uh, with the tools you have available by perhaps picking up a rock here or bending a branch slightly differently over there. For us at Ada, what this translated into was not actually um, building our own intent recognition engine ourselves first. It meant leveraging existing tools that existed. We spoke, you know, open source tools in many cases, as we just heard about. Um, it was for us, we actually leveraged IBM Watson in the early days. We leverage wit.ai, if you're, everyone's familiar with any of these platforms in the early days. Um, and it was by scavenging and using those tools that we learned about their strengths 
and their weaknesses and allowed, it us, allowed us to rapidly iterate um, uh, around what was good about them and poor about them and to ultimately build something on our own that was better. Um, so scavenging is, is, I think, super, super important. Um, and there's some great episodes in primitive technology of scavenging, as you can see. <laughs> and, then, and then finally, you know, I, I think it's just unbelievably critical um, that a as you've rapidly iterated, as you've, uh, towards a solution that you know finally works, that solves the pain that you experience manually, it's so critical to not forget where you came from. Don't forget about, about uh, the, the experience of being in the wild and, and solving that problem manually. And this is a big thing that I think about a lot now, that it is growing so quickly and that we're, um, you, you know, I, I mentioned 100 plus people in a short amount of time. Core to our company's ethos, and I think to our success in the long term, will be, um, it, that, that success will be predicated in our ability to remember where we came from, to remember the fact uh, that we did customer service manually, and to embed that mentality into every new employee that joins our company. And so we think, we think about this a ton now. You know, every employee at Ada is encouraged to actually go to a call center and experience what life was like for an agent before this automation was applied to it. To experience you know, how frustrating it is to answer you know, the 100th password reset question for the, in, in you know, the same day. Um, and to experience the value that technology applies uh, when, when that's not the case. So for you, as you think about um, you know, the solution that you have now, think about returning to the world um, that existed before it. And that'll allow you to continually improve uh, your, your implementation. Um, I, I'll leave you with a, a last little uh, bit here. Uh, I think we'll share these slides, but on the reading list side of things, I think, I think a lot about, um, uh, I think a lot about thinking about technology. And there's three, three recommended readings that I'd, I'd encourage everyone to check out. Uh, one is Kevin Kelly's uh, What Technology Wants. If anyone, um, if anyone uh, has read that in the room, I'm sure that you, you found it enjoyable. I definitely encourage everyone to read that. That's a great example of someone effectively removing themselves from technology to understand its impact on society and their life. Uh, the, the second is a, a relatively new book called Prediction Machines. It's a very valuable way to think about uh, AI as a prediction engine. I think it'll afford you new insights into problem solving in your own, in your own world. And then finally, um, a little bit, a little bit different. There's a recent article that came out. I think, I think, uh, Andreessen Horowitz published this recently about the empty promise of data moats, and that's a, another interesting sort of more contemporary perspective on uh, the downsides, perhaps, uh, or the failed promise of the of, of data when it comes to defensibility um, and, and AI. So in, check those out, uh, and I think we'll we'll share the slides afterwards. Thanks. Yeah, you should. It's pretty awesome. Um, and interestingly, uh, as I'm obviously very familiar with the product as a as an investor, the, the those, those principles have translated uh, not just in the DNA of the company, but very much the DNA of the product. And uh, do you want to talk a little bit about how precisely you found the the right balance between AI, uh, but also enabling the customers to have a high degree of visibility, transparency, and control into what the system spits out, right? As a, as a yeah. as a very different tack on the whole like AI chatbot thing, which you know goes wild and like everybody mm -hmm. hates it, and like you've, you've taken a very different approach. Yeah, so I think so. Ha happy to. So eff effectively, Ada makes uh, AI easy for non-technical customer service teams to use, and. You know, wh while we are an AI company, be because of this manual experience that we went put ourselves through in the early days, we really think of ourselves as a customer experience company, and, and for that reason, it means that you know our success is really predicated upon um, a a perfect hybrid that we're looking for between AI and between the AI and the human, and so um, you know f for us the you know the the virtual assistants and bots that our customers build are built with a, an empathy for the end user in mind. Uh, we focus a ton on providing a, a seamless handoff to a human whenever a customer serve it, whenever a customer asks for it. Um, things that, I, again, I don't think we would have thought of had we not been customer service agents ourselves. Um, 
And then throughout you know, all of this, uh, you know, we, we think of our, our product a lot like Lego. It, it turns out that um, if, you, if you go to a customer service department or if you yourself have done customer service, um, you'll very quickly realize that you know more about the business than anyone else does. You just do. You know way more about you know way more about how what the problems the business is facing, problems customer are facing. The problem is you're just not empowered to make the change. You're not empowered to 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 improve the customer service experience. There's so much of, of Ada is about um, empowerment um, via easy to use AI tools. Yeah, and I mean just to. Uh... Comment as a as an investor. I mean, so it's really interesting if you think about chatbots. Like in in some ways, that was like really the hot thing three years ago, right? Mm -hmm. And it feels like chatbots have like gone through like different levels of uh, hype cycle, like back back and forth. But uh, what, what's super interesting about this space is like precisely now. Uh, there's been like three years of learning about what AI can do and mm -hmm. cannot do, and the winners in the space are you know precisely uh, adopting this hybrid approach where. Um, you know, AI is used for what it can do, but um, uh, you know, there's uh, a, a lot of control that's given to people. So it's, it's really, uh, mm -hmm. it's really interesting as we all think about building products and not getting caught into what's hot, but like giving time to mature to then have exactly the right approach to to market. Um, do you want to talk about um, uh, the type of customers that are particularly um, uh, you know the right target for yeah. this type of approach. Sure. Yeah. So we, um, like I like I mentioned earlier, we we work with large B two C businesses that uh, have long wait times. Effectively, so we're uh, whether it's the AT and T's of the world who uh, you know in the telco vertical, the uh, we work big in retail banking. Um, uh, we're starting to explore uh, utilities, so uh, energy companies. Um, all our favorite companies. Yeah, it's all your favorite companies. I should say the common theme across a lot of our customers, we work for a number of, of, of software companies, internet businesses as well, is any industry where typically the, or where the product offering has become commoditized and the, the business is now competing on customer service. The customer service becomes a differentiator. I think that's actually true for all businesses. Um, it's just especially true right now for the banks, the telecom providers, uh, et cetera. Hmm. Yeah, that's really interesting, right? Because mm -hmm. if you think of all these businesses, fundamentally, because they come out of ties, ultimately what matters is a brand. And the brand is about trust. And the mm -hmm. way you maintain trust is through ongoing interaction, right? Yeah, exactly. And I think, you know, one of our, I'll give you an example of an airline. We work with a, an airline, Air Asia. Uh, they have 100 million passengers a year, and they used to have a wait time in their live chat channel of over an hour. Which you can imagine isn't exactly an ideal experience if you're trying to catch a flight. Within 30 days of using ADA, uh, their customer service team, service team built an experience, a, a virtual assistant, that reduced their customer service wait times to less than a minute. It's just been completely transformative for their company. And then again, because Ada is so easy to use, and because we focus on making these, um, effectively, these Lego blocks powerful but simple, um, they're now generating revenue through Ada. People are doing data, to, or they're doing uh, uh, seat changes and ticket purchases and uh, meal purchases. And, and they're generating, you know, they expect to generate more than 10 million in revenue this year through that experience. And so it, it, it's because of that empowerment and the new team that's been created inside their company to manage that experience that they're able to do that. Uh, that wouldn't have been possible if it was just about, uh, again, solving that problem intellectually and not experiencing it ourselves. Great. All right. Do we have uh, some questions? One over there. Yeah, great question. So uh, we see upwards of 80%. Most successful clients are achieving 80%. Um, uh, mo the average is probably about 60. 
And it changes over time, right? You start, most of our clients will start doing something simple. They'll focus on sort of a basic automation experience, and then they'll expand it as they integrate with their private APIs and backend systems. Do you guys do that analysis? Uh, yeah, great question. So to start, every business that we work with has a very clear understanding of where what, what the common questions are being asked are, right? You, um, you know, you're spending $10 a phone call. You know what the common phone calls are. Um, we do offer a set of tools that help cluster the, the, the questions that their, their bot is being asked that... Um, you know, they, the bot has has failed to answer, or that humans are still answering, um, and I think there's a huge opportunity to do that even better. I actually think this is a huge. There's actually a, a, an industry starting to emerge here around that problem alone. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. So we we are. Um, uh, I mean, bank questions vary. Um, a lot of them are around uh, setting up an account, changing any, anything you would do in your mobile app in your bank, you can now do with Ada through any messaging channel 24 seven in any different language. Um, and it, it, the actual use case will vary by institution. Um, uh, there's a fair amount of overlap across them though. Uh, I'm a, I've heard of IPsofts. Uh, I'm not super familiar with their approach. Um, I can speak a little bit to I, how I think it is slightly different. Um, we we focus on a non-technical stakeholder. So our part of our value is that we can sell directly to the customer service team and not have to go through engineering. And that's that's actually very useful because the customer service team understands what the ideal experience is best. Um, and that's allowed results that have been very, very, very quick. Um, and it's allowed our, the, our clients' teams to rapidly iterate to improve those results. Just to piggyback on mm. that, um, around her question around personas, do you think about that? How to buy a different data oh, got personas it. Yeah. behind the scenes and trying to learn a little bit about what the customer might be like when they're looking at a certain type of persona? Oh, interesting. Um, uh, so first, I'll, I can answer that in, in sort of two ways. Um, first is uh, our clients will use Ada to design the, their bot persona themselves. So marketing typically gets involved. Uh, we recommend that you're totally transparent about the identity of your bot. And that's where we definitely see the most success. Um, on the customer persona side of things, um, our clients are starting to use Ada to essentially build these cohorts of one. So you, you have a totally personalized experience because of, of Ada, because of an Ada-powered bot, meaning that your the content you're surfaced is informed by what geography you're in, perhaps by your LTV, so how valuable you are to the client, uh, by the time of day and agent availability, um, by a host of factors and variables that you, the client or the customer service team will manage inside Ada. And that's, that's really, really powerful, and I think it's representative of a larger shift where Customer experience is now becoming, or customer service is really becoming part of customer experience, which, you know, me, meaning that service and sales and marketing are all becoming closer and closer together. All right, wonderful. Thank you so much, Mike. This Thanks. was great. Thank great. you. Thank you. Thanks, Matt. Thank you, Sam.